Because you know if there is, it's just an excuse before God and it's time to tear that excuse from your life and move on in that which you've been called heavenward in Christ Jesus. Today. Today. It's today. In this moment. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for each and every heart and life that is in this room. Each soul is precious to you, God. You know everything that there is to know about them in this moment. You also know the race that has been marked out for them. And God, I pray that each one today would make a decision to move beyond the excuses of their life. And that God, their life would be the best worship that they can possibly give to you each and every day. Offering our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Romans 12, 1. And so, Father, today, as you minister into this church, as your spirit speaks into our lives, God, I pray that people would find life, that they would find abundant life today, that they would find Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They would meet Jesus as their healer today. They would meet Jesus as their source and their provider today. God, we believe these things. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen, amen. Before you're seated, just shake hands with someone one last time. You may be seated. Joe, thanks for being here, even though the 49ers are playing right now. That's a, that is living sacrifice right there. All right. Great to see you, everybody. It's a great story about a guy by the name of Todd Silva, and Todd Silva was lamenting some of the decisions that he had made in his life. Uh, that had put his family into financial difficulty. And this was, well, times were good. And they had made some, well, he had made some poor decisions, led his family in that direction, and it was having catastrophic um, inf or influence, impact upon his personal family's life. And he was uh, going to Barnes & Noble to try to find a book that would help him with budgeting or something, but he had a whole dollar. How many, knows, how many of you know that you can't go into Barnes & Noble and get anything for a dollar? But he sat there in the parking lot with the dollar out, probably recognizing that there was going to be nothing there for him that day. And he felt like the Lord talked to him about giving away that dollar. And it was that day that uh, give a dollar away, give a dollar away a day was created. Now, I'm not totally sure on where Todd is in his level of faith, but he recognized in that moment that God was his source. And he talks about that. See, he made a decision in that moment that he was going to give away something that even though it was a dollar, but he was going to do that not only today, but he was going to do it the next day and the next day after that. He went into Barnes & Noble, and he walked around, and he decided that since he was a guitar player, that he would put that dollar in a guitar magazine. So he stuck it in there and just had about an inch showing off the top, and he just kind of stood around and waited, just kind of, you know, surfing, the, uh, surfing there in front of the magazines, right? And as he was there, uh, an employee came along, and he was cleaning up the magazines because we never put them back in the right spot. And uh, he saw the guitar magazine with the dollar and he reached up and saying, man, I thought this was fake. Look at that, a buck. Isn't that great? And he put it into his pocket. And Todd said, man, it was one of the most freeing moments of my life. And on the way home, I stopped at the grocery store and I stuck it in between some cans of soup. And it just, it just started this thing in his life. And to this day, he does it every single day. It has spawned a movement. Todd talks about that being generous has created a, uh, just God's abundance in his life. And folks, sometimes we, we don't know how God is going to get us through what we're going through or what's going on in our lives. But when we honestly believe that God is our source, and I believe that today, that God is our source, then he does make a way. And so, as this church is learning not only that he is our source, but he's a generous God. And as we are generous to him, he, he provides opportunity for ministry all around us. So with that in mind, if you're at the end of the aisle, if you'd reach down, grab one of those buckets and we're going to pray together. So hang on to it for just a moment. And let's pray. Let's bow in prayer. Father God, we thank you for every dollar and every dime today. God, we thank you that, that you make a way. And Lord, as we recognize... And as we learn to trust you as our source, source of everything, you are the source of salvation. You are the source of healing. You are the source of, of grace in our lives and mercy. But you are also the source of that which we have need of. 
And God, I pray that as we recognize that, that we would give from a heart that has been blessed and understands that, God, we just, uh, we just need to move in obedience. We need to move in trust. So as we receive tithe and offering, as we give to ruin our missions program, Lord, you'd bless this church in abundance today. We pray it in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. 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 God bless you. I'll pass that along the aisle. A couple quick announcements for you. I don't know if you saw the truck out there that uh, was decorated for Trunk or Treat. Trunk or Treat is coming up on October 31st. It is one of our outreaches into the community. And we are looking for 36 different trunks. It can be the back, uh, back end of a truck like is out there today. Um, we could be a Volkswagen. I don't know how that's going to work. But anyways, uh, it can be 36 different types of vehicles. And we were asking that you would decorate it and you would allow your vehicle to either become a game station or a candy giving station. Now, if you want to be a game station and a candy giving, candy giving station, we can do that too, all right? But please, 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 we need to know now because you see, as we get closer to that event, we need to be planning and doing our layouts. And so if we don't find out that you are all along have been wanting to do this, but you've just been waiting to put your, you know, your application in, we would really appreciate knowing Ah, uh, today. That would be great, okay? And so that is right there. That's your registration form for your vehicle, all right? And so if you would help us out with that, we'll collect those at the end of the service along with our connection cards, or you can take that out to the gazebo. We also need volunteers to go along. We need at least 50 volunteers on top of the 36 vehicles and their participants in that regard, all right? So lots going on with Trunk or Treat. It's going to be great. It's really going to be great. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, the, uh, just recently, just to give you a quick update, the more that we try to um, beat back the darkest darkness in our community, the more the enemy just hates it, right? And, uh, you know, since all this uh, stuff with the city and just, you know, coming alongside, I think we've been tagged almost every second day since then. And uh, you know what, folks? We can't be afraid of this. We just need to stand up against it and just keep going forward. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so as we provide an opportunity to trunk or treat, it is an opportunity to come alongside and uh, just do something really good and positive in our community, all right? Uh, pastor shareholders, this is a special group that uh, it's open to everyone, but I want to talk to you specifically in regards to prosperity out of Deuteronomy. There's a lot of, a lot of people that speak on, on prosperity, and I don't think all of it's biblical. Actually, I know for a fact it's not all biblical. And so I want an opportunity to talk to you about once a quarter on, on what it means to be prosperous and what God wants to do with prosperity in your life. And so if you're a small business owner or if you're someone that just would like to know a little bit more, we've got a meeting coming up. We're reserving the, uh, the conference room at Marie Calendar, so it'll be on a Saturday morning at 8 a.m. But that, uh, that little brochure kind of explains what that's all about, and I'd like you to take a look at that. All right, let's get rid of some of these things on my way here today. Hey, do I have any runners in the room? Any runners? One, two. Come on, be proud, runners. Raise your hand high, right? Raise them high, right? How many, how many former runners in the room? Let's see that. See, the crowd triples when we say that. Believe it or not, I was a runner in high school. I ran cross country. And the reason I ran cross country, not because I loved running, but I loved being off campus. And anything to get me off the campus was the sport I wanted to be involved in every day. We got to run off the campus, and I loved it. I loved it. Now, once I graduated, unfortunately, I hung up the running shoes, not motivated to do the hard work and keep moving forward. Now, recently, I've started to run again, and um, I hate it. <laughs> I yeah, I hate it. I really do. Um, you know, and I have to trick myself now to do this because my endurance really stinks. And so I've got I've to look at a block and go, okay, I'm going to run full out for like however long it takes me to get to the end of that block. So I, you know, of course, strategically pick the shortest blocks I can in any neighborhood. But I run full on for about a block and then I, I walk for another block and then I start again. And I've noticed even in just a few weeks time that my endurance has uh, now carried me a couple blocks at a time, or three blocks, or and, uh, very quickly moving me forward. But I'll tell you what, folks, I feel no joy in running. No joy. I feel joy in resting. 
That's where the joy is because I've learned that I can rest knowing that I've put in the hard work towards the big picture. There are many things that I want to do in life, and I'm sure that is true of you, big picture stuff and good intention kind of things, but sometimes those are the things in our life that are hard to get started, our excuse being that it will take a long time. Now, we're doing this series on excused, and so far we've talked about these two major excuses that people use in their life, and the first one was being, it will be hard, and the second one, last week's, it will be risky. Today, I want to talk to you about this idea that it will be or it will take a long time. Now, what kind of things in your life today are slow to get started and take time in your life? Getting in shape is, uh, I'm I'm hearing that all the time. Writing a book, taking that trip that you've been planning for all your life. How about getting out of debt? Uh, Helping someone through incarceration or growing your family or getting your your kids on a more regular basis. Um, I posted this question yesterday on, on, on Facebook, and it, it had like 53, 54 hits in just a few hours. And the question was this, tell me briefly something that is hard to start and even harder to finish. And my good friend Doug and Brea said, or Brea said, life. And Arnie, who obviously doesn't take these things very seriously, said, milkshakes. Uh, bad news, healing from a broken heart, a diet. How about writing a song? Someone wrote, wrote a book, Raising Kids, Relationships. Now, I want to point out something to you here. Don't move anything. Chauncey. Chauncey's been married two weeks. Dude, where are you? Chauncey, where are you? Chauncey, two weeks. <laughs> Brother, if you think that list is long now, <laughs> do I get an amen in the room? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Two weeks, honeydew list. You have no idea. <laughs> we'll be having special prayer for Chauncey following the service today. <laughs> All the men gather around, lay hands, and there we go. Um, let's see what else is on that list. Uh, the process, oh, 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 the process of forgiveness. Uh, Jose gives me a, a small dissertation there about owning the things in life. It's excellent. Screenwriting by John. What else we got there? Pull, pull a few more, a few more up. Uh, my buddy Manny in songwriting. That's what he does. Uh, mentoring. Uh, Jennifer talks about being per, uh, per, uh, persevering to go get a job. Keep going. Keep going. What else we got? Writing the book, bringing kids into this world. Susan, there you go. Saw you earlier. Um, Exercise, especially running. Thank you very much. As you can see, there are a lot of things that that are are slow to get started in our life, but can be very, very, very difficult. Now, many of the things on that list, we can take them off now because everybody else is like, ooh, what's up there? All right. Um, All these things, the things that are in your life that are slow to start, Many of them are worthwhile, and they should be done. But the problem is, if so many things are important in our life, how how is it going to get done? How are we going to complete it? So where do we start, especially with this? Can anything be more important than stepping into God's ordained purpose for your life? Right? See, I I hit you with the zinger, because what are you going to say? Well, man, if I say no, I look like an idiot in church, right? So I'll say, yeah, that's, that's it, that's it. God-ordained purposes in my life and a diet, right? You know, so we put, put them right there. No, I, here's the deal. Scripture says this out of Matthew 6, 33, and I love this. Uh, if I have life verses, it's these two verses that come together out of Matthew's gospel. It says this, seek first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness and all these other things. You got things in your life that you want to get done? Sure, all these other things will be given to you as well. Now, here's the verse I want you to hear uh, directly today. Verse 34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. That's good advice, isn't it? Don't worry about tomorrow. Because for tomorrow, will worry about itself. Each day, and this is a promise, by the way, each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, I thought... I thought scripture was always supposed to inspire us and make us 
fly up in the air and just feel really good, you know? Folks, this is, uh, this is a promise that there's going to be trouble in our lives. But if we're not so focused on always the future, but in the immediate thing that God has put before us, then the promise is true that, that we have an opportunity to work through something at that moment. You know, this whole idea that it will take a long time for some is a valid reason to not start something. But for most, it's just an excuse to not proceed towards a, a lifestyle of faith that is, that is healthy and rich and, and full of His design. If it's your desire to elevate your faith, to grow your life in the maturity of Christ, it doesn't really matter. Now hear me, it doesn't really matter how long it takes. It just doesn't. You see, and this is particularly true when you're conscious that you live your life, every single bit of it, in the present moment and only in the present moment. All you ever get is now with this promise of His glory. But the decisions that you make now aren't yesterday's decisions. You make a decision again today. Even if you made a decision yesterday, if you affirm it again today, it's the decision that you've made again today. Every thought occurs in the present moment and every change, every change has a defining moment. And some of you in this room are going to have a defining moment of change today. Some of you are going to choose to give your life to Jesus. Others of you will choose to move beyond an excuse that has been lingering in your life, this whole idea that it's just going to take too long. And today, a defining moment change. Now, sometimes it takes others outside of ourselves to help us realize um, this really simple truth. A friend of mine was sharing with me a, a story he read out of a, a self-help book, a really popular guy, and he was, he was talking about this idea, and I, and I agreed with him, and I want to share the story with you. It's a psychiatrist and his patient, this lady, and uh, she is telling him why she's not going to go back to school, because she just feels like she's going to be too old when, when it's finished. And uh, so the psychiatrist says, well, how old will you be in five years if you, if you begin that degree starting now? And she says, 49. Kind of smirks a little bit and says, okay, how old will you be in five years if you don't go back to school today? <laughs> well, 49. See, folks, she, uh, she had that deer in the headlights look one that had become conscious of an excuse that she, she had created in her life about not moving forward. You know, how, however long it took for you to create a self-defeating habit in your life, you did it in one day, one moment at a time. And I tell you what, there's absolutely no proof on this earth that that which God has called you forward to is going to take a long time. Since time really to God is, well, think of it this way. Our time on here here on earth is really very short. Have you happened to really think through the whole idea how long eternity is? It's pretty big. It's pretty vast. It's, it's pretty long. Um, Romans 12, 2. We quoted verse 1 earlier, but here's what I want you to see, because I believe that if we make our mindset that in the moment we have opportunity, then Romans 12, 2 makes absolute sense when it says this, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Pattern of this world in this case is believing that it will take too long. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Your life can be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, do you transform it with the pattern of this world? No, of course not. But you transform it by the renewing of your mind, by allowing the Holy Spirit to work with you in this immediate moment. Oh, man, that sounds like work. You know, the great thing about allowing this, this newness of mind to to b begin to believe and behave in that which he's called as heavenward in Christ Jesus, when we begin to do that, here's the fruit of it. Then you will be able to test and to approve what God's will is in your life. His good and pleasing and his perfect will. Think about this for a moment. What possesses a man to run across the country on one leg to raise money for cancer? What, what gets into a, a young lady to swim from Florida to Cuba? Uh, why do people, even 90 years after the fact, when they started climbing Everest, 
Why do people still climb Everest despite 200 people dying trying to make that very climb? They do it, and we can come up with any number of reasons, both positive and negative, but it all comes down to this. They believe they can, and it changes their behavior. It starts with one day, and the day after that, no matter how long it will take. There's, a, there's an old Eastern saying, and, and I'm going to use it because no one can really take credit for it, even though people try. But it says this, it's the idea that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Your faith is a step of faith, and it's something that gets built on each and every day as you press on to that which you've been called heavenward in Christ Jesus. It now just means the mindset of your life, the present moment, needs to come together. Don't worry about tomorrow. Now, some of you have stayed up at night, not able to sleep because what? You are worried about tomorrow. Maybe you're worried about that interview, or perhaps there's someone that you're, you don't want to see. Uh, maybe something didn't, didn't go well at the end of Friday at work, and now Monday is that moment where we deal with it, right? Um, oftentimes, we don't sleep well, but don't worry about tomorrow. For, guess what? For today has enough worries of its own. And folks, let me tell you this. It has nothing to do with creating a sense of false confidence. See, God has called you to go the distance. Galatians 5, 7 says this. You were running a good race. Again, that whole idea of running. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? Well, the fact of the matter is you're always going to have people in your life that are negative or are going to sow seeds of discontent in your life. And folks, I just got just a little hint. This is for free this morning. You want to be around people that pour positive things into your life. You really do. Now, we can all take constructive criticism, but some think it's a gift to give it to you. And I'm here to tell you that you're not necessarily the, 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 the welcome mat for everyone's cr constructive criticism. You need to be begin to believe what God believes ab about you. But more so than who cut it in on you, why did you cut yourself off with sabotaging behavior? You see, it's not always others. Sometimes it's us. We do it to ourselves. We keep ourselves from moving forward. We get stuck or we get in a rut and we begin to build up all kinds of excuses and we, don't have, we haven't built up endurance yet in our lives because we're afraid to start because we think it's going to take too long. The adage that life is a marathon, not a sprint, applies to our spiritual journey. But that doesn't mean just because it is a daily journey that it's a grind. Because some days the Holy Spirit just sweeps in in a wonderful way and exponentially just blows grace and power into our lives. And you know what happens from there? Something amazing happens and it's what God is doing all over the world and he is pulling you in on it. And you are, are able to feel the breath of the Lord on your life. And you are just kind of moving in a way that you never saw happening. All because you are looking at the very immediate moment that, you know what, I've got to deal with what's before me right now, today. 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 I like this. <laughs> I really do. You know, Philippians 1.6 says this. It's from Paul. And he's talking to the church in Philippi and he says this. Being confident of this. I like when someone's confident, by the way. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in... You know what? This is going to... If you know the person next to you, then it's, you can do this. If you don't, just smile at them. But if you know the person next to him, just say, you know what? God has started a good work in you. Just go, you know, go ahead. You can tell them that. God has started a good work in you. And they're going, aw, shucks. But here's the deal. Not only has he begun a good work in you, that he will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. I love that. You see, Paul is confident that as he prays, 
Paul is confident that as he prays, with a confidence not based on what he sees in the Philippians' lives, he knows that the Philippians aren't perfect. He knows that their past achievements, now good in some cases, not so good in others, have nothing to do whether or not he should be confident about them. He is confident in God, the God that is resident in their life. He is confident in the love of God to propel them forward. God can be relied on to bring people's lives to completion. And that includes every one of you. Sometimes we go, it doesn't work for me. Yes, it does. But you see, if we only believe and don't behave, then it's just something that we kind of have out here, but don't actually apply into our everyday living. Hmm. You know, I, I love this because I had this, this, this visual last night as I was sharing this message in our Saturday night service. And, um, and I just had this visual of a church where, where hundreds of people um, were just standing and milling around. And as people were coming to church and as they were walking in the doors, everyone around them was saying, God's put good stuff in you. God's doing neat things in you. Be confident in this, that God has something for you. Be confident that God will finish what he has started in your life. And just this, this community of faith that is just so full of confidence in God's power to finish what he started in your life. And I just thought, what an amazing place. I would want to go there. I would want to be a part of a church that believes that and speaks the truth of God's word into my life. Because sometimes, come on, let's be real. Sometimes we walk into church and we don't feel like spiritual giants. We feel kind of spiritually beat up. And maybe we've had the classic Sunday morning routine. The kids all went 666 on us this morning, right? You thought, I know where the Antichrist is coming from. It's from the second bedroom down the hall on the left. I see it. I see it coming. Woo, watch out. Right? Some days we don't walk in here all full of the Spirit. But we walk in here head low. Feeling beat up. And someone walks up to you and says, being confident in this, that He who began a good work in you. Woo! Does that not open up the whole world of life and faith? And they say, you know what? I can do this. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow because I already got promised that tomorrow is full of stuff. But I got stuff that I need to deal with in this immediate. But the stuff that I get to deal with in the immediate is stuff that he's given me the grace and the mercy to move into. And so I'm going to live in this moment and see what he wants me to discover right now so I can build that for tomorrow's stuff. But oftentimes we get looking so far ahead and there's nothing wrong with looking ahead. But sometimes we get looking so far ahead we forget what's going on in the immediate and we miss it. (sighs) Have you ever thought about the work that's been started in you? Do you know that every one of you has an active spiritual formation that is going on? Are you confident, now hear this, are you confident in the life change that is happening in you? Allowing faith and belief to dry new behavior and right living. Are you confident? Are you confident? See, for some, Paul's got more confidence in you than you have in you. But Paul has that confidence because he knows how good and loving God is. Paul also recognizes that he was saved on a road, going another way, and God grabbed his life and he turned it around for kingdom's glory. And if he can do it for Paul, he can do it for you today. He can grab your life and send it in another direction. But some of us go, it's going to take too long. You don't know, Pastor Jeff, what I've been through or what I'm dealing with and everything else. And I say, you're right, I don't know. But I know one that does know. And he's confident. In this, that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it today. You know, I I carry a a few projects around in my life, and and right now I'm thinking about this really great book that I'm reading, but I only read like three pages at a time, 
And so, you know, when you read three pages at a time, you kind of forget what happens because the book takes too long. So I'm constantly turning back to the first two chapters to remind myself of what's going on. And sometimes we live our faith like that. We have to keep going back to the beginning. Not sure what's really going on. Because we haven't been building on each and every day that's been given to us. We're always projecting so far out and there's nothing wrong with projecting far out, but when we begin to serve with mindless obligation, we're not serving. We're surviving. And you've been called to be more than a conqueror through Christ who gives you strength today. And that sounds like living to me, not survival. And we need to begin to believe and behave in that which he's called us forward to, to live right living today. Today. Today, don't put it off to tomorrow. Don't say it's going to take too long. See, some people get stuck believing that their dreams that God originated in their lives are just going to take too long. And, it, and for some, that's a very legitimate question. And, it, and, and, and it's completely legit for them. So I don't want you to be confused. Are we supposed to live one day at a time? Yes. Are we supposed also to look towards the future? Yes. Oh, I hate when you do this to me, Jeff. You see, in Christ, every day is a new opportunity to live in the grace that he extends in the moment into your life. And guess what else? What else? His mercy is new every single morning. And the experiences of faith that you are having today are going to provide a platform for you to stand on again tomorrow. And you will have learned that owned it, experienced it, and it makes you more mature and stronger in Christ because you are living in today and not always looking so far forward that it keeps you from actually beginning. You know, God is great to give us dreams and birth visions in our life, but sometimes we become so enamored with that which is out there that we, we fail to start because we keep going, oh, I'm so excited. This is just going to happen one day. Unlikely. Well, thank you. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes. Plus, I needed water, so that's okay. Unlikely, folks. Unlikely. <laughs> it's, it's like I have my own little laugh track, you know? Why is that unlikely? Because, folks, I think we'll miss it. I don't think we're spiritually in tune enough if we're not learning to live in the experience that he gives us in the moment to handle that which he's got for us in the present unless we seriously take this whole idea of that let's worry about today, right? When we keep trying to move forward beyond today, we miss that which he wants to teach us to own, to experience, and to build on in this moment. 1 Corinthians 1.8 says this, he will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians 7 1 speaks to this whole idea that since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves, right? From everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. What an incredible verse that is. So we have to have goals to move forward. We have to have them. But we must not become so consumed with that which is in our future that we, begin, we forget that there's a process to starting and taking another step or a 100th step or a 1,000th or however many it is. You see, when we begin to follow the Lord in the immediate, you can expect to be redirected. When I read about the life of Paul, or I read about the apostles, or I read about any of God's saints, I recognize that as they are walking with the Lord, often he calls an audible. And that audible provides an opportunity for incredible ministry. When we don't worry about tomorrow, hear me, then we're more readily available to serve where he calls today. When you're not worried about tomorrow, you're ready to serve where he calls you today. Do you realize you were called to serve him today? In your family, men, you are the leaders of those home. You've been called to lead in your family today. You're going, man, it's going to take a long time for me to become a spiritual giant. Well, maybe, but it begins today. 
See, now when we start thinking about all the other things that have to happen in our life, I want to assure you that it is worth starting this journey because there's, it, why are you so confident it's going to take a long time? Because you see, if God is in it, God can do amazing stuff and can bring things together in a very quick order as we begin to move in righteous living. Oh, I love this. All right, I got to wrap this up. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Pretty famous verses. Why don't you go ahead and open your Bibles to there. That's uh, it's a good place to, to be. Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. I love the picture. There's a great visual that goes with these verses today. Hebrews 12, 1 to 3, and it says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. I can see this, right? Let us throw. Right? Throw off. Throw off everything that hinders and, that, and, and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race. Whoa. Have you ever seen that? You've seen the race to run with perseverance. But have you ever seen that this race is marked out for you? Come on, look at that. This race, that which you've been called heavenward in Christ Jesus, that has all been put in motion. And when you begin to live today in it, then that marking is, is, is footed and it gives you a direction. It gives you a direction for tomorrow. So this race, it's not willy-nilly. I don't know about you, but you turn off the lights, I'll walk into every chair in this room. And some of us, we feel like in our spiritual life, we're just walking around banging into things. Folks, when we recognize that there's a body, there's a group of people that have gone before us that have done these things, it should encourage us to run this race that has been marked out for us. Verse number two, let us fix our eyes so we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Why was Jesus joyful in this moment? You know, before Jesus was sent to earth, he spent his time in eternity with the Father. Don't take this personally. But when he came to earth, he kind of downgraded his living conditions. Even though God created this, but this isn't heaven. This is not the glories of eternity. But he came. He endured the cross, right? Who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand. The prize for him after he had endured the cross was to sit at the right hand of the Father. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You know, for us at SGA, believing and behaving that God's purposes will continue to unfold is, is really essential. You know, the things that we are proud of in our past are absolutely tremendous. The things that have gone before us are wonderful building blocks for us to, to move forward. And, and, and it just shows us that God's unfolding grace is for us each and every day. You know, I got a friend or a call from a friend this week from the district office, and and he was saying, he got me on the phone and said, Jeff, um, I was speaking to a national official with the assemblies, and he was in, in Louisville, Kentucky this summer, and he was riding down an elevator at 7:15 or 7:14, and in the elevator, all of a sudden, all these phones started going off with a bunch of students that he was riding with, and they all kind of silenced their phones, joined hands, and they started to pray. And now this was the Fine Arts Festival, and he said, I'm used to seeing kids pray before they go out on stage and say pray prayers like, God, make me better than I've ever been before. Give me the voice of Mariah Carey, and I'll give you all the glory, God. We pray those types of prayers, those selfish prayers. But after they finished praying, the, the, the official said, what are you doing? And one of the smart owl kids said, praying. I think I can guess who that is.
I don't want to point anybody out today. That would be unfair. Why do you do that? Well, our church believes that we should pray at least twice a day, and we pray for our church, we pray for our country. And so he called Tony and says, do you, do you know what's going on? He said, yeah, they got this crazy dream that every time zone of the world, that people will begin to pray 24 hours a day, around the clock at 7, 14, no, no matter where they live. Because they believe that prayer changes things. It's a great dream. It's a great dream, and we need to keep pushing forward in that which God has given us. You see, as God lays these things out, we need to continue to be faithful. So if you've not yet set your cell phone to 7.14 a.m. or 7.14 p.m., you need to today. And when that phone goes off, you get to pray about that which is going on in your life in that moment. Because you see, like Paul, I'm confident of this, that not only is God faithful to us, but he's confa- he is faithful to his church. And as we dream big, awesome dreams, we need to be firmly rooted in the, in the idea of honoring Him in all that we do. It may take a long time. But you know, if we start now, we experience the joy of growing into the troubles or the blessings that He has promised to walk us through as we grow. Just a moment, we're going to sing a song together, but I'd like to draw your attention to the connection card. If you're our guest today, we ask that you would fill this out each and every week. We also ask our regular attenders and members to fill this out as well. This just kind of helps, especially keeping our database with you, members and adherents. You guys change your cell phones and your email addresses a lot. and We can't keep up. And so when you give us this information, we input it on Monday morning, first thing. But the backside is equally important. It has something here in regards to a memory verse. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. I think everybody should know those two verses. I've also provided some extra reading for you today. And I've given you a few next step or next uh, points to consider. First one is, I am determined to live today and not miss his opportunities. Is that anybody in this room today? Secondly, I will pray and encourage others to press on. You know, I would challenge you today to express to one or two people before you leave. Be confident of what God has placed in your life. To begin to encourage a brother or sister in Jesus today that that God has birthed a good dream and He will be faithful to complete it. But you need to begin living in it today. Finally, don't allow yourself to get cut off. There's lots of distractions to get cut off, right? Right? They're all around us. And maybe you're doing it to yourself. But if you've got a distraction, you need to be praying about that distraction today. Today. And moving forward in that. We're not going to collect these until after the song together because I really want you to be prayerful over these before I grab these in just a moment. But we're going to sing that song, This is the Day, right? Or Today is the Day. This is the Day is the song I sang in Sunday school. There we go. When I was that big today is the day today is the day why don't you stand with me we're going to sing this together i'm going to encourage you to give your best worship now and then we're going to collect these cards and i got a call to prayer in just a moment would you sing with us god bless you
Today is your day to accept Jesus Christ. You've been putting it off, talking about that's ah, just going to take too long. It's just, yeah, yeah. Today is your day. Is there anyone in this crowd today? You just heard me say it's your day to accept Jesus Christ. Is that you? Can I see your hand? Would you raise it high? Come on. Usually every service there's someone. Anyone in this service today? Anyone in this service today? I find that remarkable. God bless. Thank you. I see it. I do. Thank you. God bless. I see your hand. Thank you. Is there another today? Today is the day. Except Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Today is the day. How about this? You've been putting off something for a very long time because you think it's going to take a long time. But today the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you and say, today is the day you trust me with this very thing that you've been putting off for a long time. See your hand. Put them up. Come on. I see them. Others, come on, let's, let's, let's be bold here. Let's be bold. Because God speaks. God speaks into our hearts and lives. I'm going to invite my prayer friends to come forward. Leo and Melody are going to be right here, and they want to meet you that raised your hand to accept Jesus today. And they're, they're right here. And then our other prayer friends are gathered across the front. And I want to do something special today as well. I'm going to ask George and Mary to come and stand just here on the other side of Gabe and Shawnee. And the reason I want them to come today is because Mary is, is walking through some screening processes for cancer. And we've, we've had a lot of cancer in our church this last year and a bit. And, um, you know, church, this is what family does for each other. We come alongside and we pray. But what I would really love is I know many of, there's many women in this church that have walked through cancer in the last little bit. I would ask that you would come and you would just lay a hand on Mary today. Could I have you come first just to kind of beat the crowd? Those ladies that have walked through cancer that would just want to come and, 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 and lay a hand. Prayer, this is, this is a great opportunity. You've walked through that. Come on, thank you. Thanks, ladies. This is amazing, right? It's amazing. And so, praise the Lord. It's a, it's a unique fraternity. It's powerful. It's powerful. Maybe a couple men could gather around George because he's looking awfully lonely over there. Some men could gather around George and just love on George a little bit. But we want to pray. We know you have needs each and every week that you come with. And our prayer friends are here to pray with you. If you raise your hand again and accept Jesus, you come. And if you didn't raise your hand but you wanted to, you just tell one of the prayer friends, say, you know what, today's my day. Today I'm accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Or if there's another thing going on in life, it's all good when we give it to Jesus. That which he's calling us heavenward to. Father God, I pray this blessing over your church today. Being confident of this. That he who began a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. And Lord, I believe your word bears repeating again. So being confident of this, Philippians 1.6. That he who began a good work in us will be faithful to to complete it. Church, God is doing good stuff in your life. Don't deny it. Don't cut yourself off. Begin to move in it today. 
Because today is the day. If you've got a prayer need, would you come at this time before I say amen and people start going the other way? If you've got a prayer need today, would you come this direction? We have prayer friends waiting to see you. And I need to collect those cards, right? Pass those connection cards along the way. An usher will be there at the end of the aisle to pick it up. I really want to get these. If we don't get these, please hand it to an usher on the way out today, all right? Because they're very valuable to us. God bless you, folks. Thanks for being in the house. Be confident. Be confident. Thanks for being here. God bless you.